Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Runcy and this is Runcy Studios, an artist safe space and art haven. Today I'm going to be talking on efficiency. Efficiency in the studio space. Efficiency where you're working and your daily um, habits around your business as an artist. I'm primarily speaking to artists in their studio or up and coming artists who are renovating a space, turning maybe their living room or a bedroom or just part of a bedroom into a studio space, just enough that they can continue to work and do what they love. Uh, I think efficiency is huge, especially when you're trying to make that transition and prove not only to yourself or family, but to your bank account that there is a return to all the work that you're putting in. And unfortunately, a lot of artists don't realize that their lack of efficiency is what eats up all of their profits, not their inability to sell necessarily or that their art isn't good. There are a lot of artists who are selling, but when I see their palette, there's tons and tons of wasted paint because they're not thinking of how to save it for the next painting. There are artists who aren't buying in bulk and paying absorbent amounts for smaller canvases when it might be cheaper for them and more cost efficient to buy enough canvas to to wrap a hundred stretcher bars and that way you're set up for the next at least six months to a year. Obviously it ebbs and changes throughout the year but it's much more efficient to put your time towards one or two goals that will have a much bigger impact than thinking job to job or painting to painting. Especially if this is something you plan on doing for the the next 10 years, you need to start thinking, what will help me out 10 years from now? What will put more money in my bank account? What will allow me to keep doing what I love and help me afford the equipment that I've always dreamed of having in my studio? The truth is that equipment will help boost your sales because usually that equipment adds to your efficiency. And that's why a lot of more expensive materials and more expensive things um, are priced that way. But if you know how to use them, you can get a lot of return out of them. Okay, so I'm talking about saving money, right? So how do we save money? How do we make sure we're being efficient, and we're not wasting. Well, the first thing that I really want to cover today is making things accessible. Having accessibility to all of your tools will make you a lot more money. What do I mean by that? For all artists, I think we've all experienced losing our favorite pencils, losing the marker color that we needed, breaking pencils or um, maybe misplacing a sketchbook. And then you have to spend time shopping, going out, buying these things, spending more money on materials that were probably behind your desk or at the bottom of one of your art drawers. You know, we just need to be more aware of what we have. And the best way to do that is to make everything accessible. Organize your workspace, organize your materials. Don't tell yourself that artists are messy and this is the best way I function because you're losing money when you don't know what's there. I can't tell you how many times I rebought the same tube of paint because I could not locate it. I either left it at school or I took it somewhere and I didn't have like a uh, container that I put everything back in when I was done. It's just kind of a haphazard, toss everything in the bag and we're good to go. And you end up losing a lot of material and then losing more money buying new materials. So just be kind of aware of how you set up and what that does for you. Another reason that accessibility is a huge part of efficiency is is the fact that you want a very low barrier to entry when you start a painting or you start an artwork. So if my studio space is my living room, but I always have to clean up after I work, 
where I have to pack all of my materials up, take them to my bedroom, put them under my bed, you know, break down the easel, put the easel out in the garage. If I do that every time I paint, I'm raising my barrier to entry, which means it'll take a lot more energy to get started. I mean, the amount of work it takes to come up with a good idea and then have the material to start, that alone is draining. That alone is like three to five hours of strenuous thought that usually after that, you may not really believe in the idea anymore or you just ran out of time on the weekend before you have to go back to your job. So you don't think you'll be able to work on it until next weekend, maybe the weekend after that. Maybe this is a cycle that you're used to and it's the third year of not being able to get started because everything is just so spread out and it takes so much work just to be able to paint something or do something that you love. So if this really is a priority or something that you want to bring into your day-to-day -day routine, you need to give space to it. You need to give some portion of your living quarters to this. Um, if that's just a corner of your table, if that's a sketchbook that you can pull out with some pencils and you just draw every once in a while, maybe you like to watch YouTube tutorials or something like that, that just kind of sparks your creativity. And then after you watch 10 minutes, you go off on your own tangent and draw whatever you're thinking. That's totally fine. It just needs to be something that gets the gears turning. I remember that I was sketching for about two to three years before seriously getting into painting just because I wanted to make it a daily habit so much so that I was not used to going without it. And that's kind of how I live now is that even though I don't paint every day, I'm always improving and working on my skills and building things to improve my studio and just making sure holistically I'm improving my professionalism as a business artist. And so in terms of efficiency, what I did to make sure that I could paint regularly, I went to Ikea. I bought one of those push carts in their kitchen section because I had a few different shelves. And at the time I didn't have a lot of material. So I figured I could fit most of my paint in the little cart um, drawers there and then anything larger and all the cloths, rags that I needed. Those could go on the bottom shelves. And that way everything was right there within about a four foot to one foot space. I didn't have to move it. I could easily walk around it. It's similar in size to a coffee table, so it really didn't take up a lot of space, especially while I was living alone and going to school. So it was the biggest advantage that I had to being alone was that I could set that up in my living room. Um, of course, just in the corner, I wasn't painting massive paintings at the time. The largest was probably a two foot by three foot painting, but most of the time it was just small area of the room in my little square and it was always set up so as soon as I came home I could change eat lunch or dinner and get to work if I wanted I didn't really have a TV or anything um, that was always on distracting me but I was able to use it to display references and occasionally watch um, art movies or documentaries now I probably relax a lot more than I used to which is good because I, I did way too much. Another part of efficiency is just being clean. Unfortunately, I know a lot of artists aren't that apt to being clean and it's not your favorite thing to do. And trust me, my desktop gets cluttered often. Just papers and drawings and a camera and whatever pencils and materials I'm using. Somehow it all ends up on my desk. But every day or two, I try to reorganize and put some things away, make sure that when I start the next morning, I'm not spending an hour plus cleaning and reorganizing, and then I can't get into my flow from the start of the day. So just be aware of that. Think about how you can keep your space more organized, because like I said, if you walk into your space and you have a large barrier of entry, 
it's just going to take so much more convincing to even work because you have to clean up first then you can set everything up then you can potentially work if you have the energy or time left so just try and cut down those initial barriers to entry and i guarantee you'll see a lot more efficiency in your work in terms of how much you can get done in a day and how much potential profit return you can get thank you all for listening i appreciate you tuning in if you like this episode, I appreciate it if you like down below and subscribe. If not, that's cool too. Until next time, take care.